and that's okay, right? Because whenever there's a regeneration of the doctor, when I was with Christopher Eccleston, not literally, <laughs> hurt. <laughs> oh, I know, no, no, he wouldn't give over the leather jacket. I wanted it, yeah. Anyway, uh, I, uh, there, when we did the first regeneration from Christopher into uh, David, so to speak, right? People weren't happy about it. Seriously, there was a lot of upset, and there was a lot of, this is ridiculous, and blah, 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 and going so much, because David at that time was younger, and there would be a younger person, and we all had to accept everybody loving it and everybody hating it. However, what I, when I was asked about it, and this is my same exact answer to this, okay? I, where, my sister and I talked about this on the drive down, and the thing is, where the doctor, if we buy into the world of Doctor Who, which we do, those of us who love it, we buy into it, we commit to it, we go where that TARDIS takes us. Therefore, it doesn't say that he or will be a, sh a he all the time. We don't know who he'll regenerate into, so it could conceivably happen, right? It's not just a decision. If we forget the producers who are making the decision, if we believe it as that world, okay? I'm getting really geeky and nerdy on you here, okay? If you believe it as that world, it could possibly happen, it could be a girl, right? It just so happens that there's time, the times have changed and it is the producers made the decision and blah, blah, blah. So that's one of them. The other thing is, we all get on that TARDIS. <laughs> this is my point today. We get on the TARDIS, as I did, or you get in the TARDIS with the Doctor, whoever that may be, and we go in that TARDIS for the journey and the experience and the stories. Now, I love Doctor Who. I have since I was four or five and can remember my first experience with Doctor Who. However, we have to wait and see what happens, right? So the people who are the critics at the moment, they have a right to be critical, but let's all give it a chance. How about that? Just sit back and give it a chance. Because when she took that hood off, I went, oh, okay, Captain Jack might like you. <laughs> Please, Mr. Chipnell. <laughs> Go ahead. Speaking of Captain Jack, my name is Jack. Is it? And thank you for making my name awesome and fabulous. You're so welcome. You're cute with your glasses on. I like the spark ones and your spidey senses. <laughs> Could you come up here for a minute? I need help reading something. <laughs> Stand right there. Yeah. Good. All right, and your name is Jack. Jack, you're pretty fit looking. You know what I love about this thing? I'm a little lost for words. Settle down. I like someone who takes control sometimes. Um, I have a tag on the back of my pants. I need to read. Elongated? Are you getting elongated right now? <laughs> Don't stare too long, your eyes might fall out. You'll go blind. Your glasses might fog up. I'm telling you, the steam that's coming out the back here, it's gonna happen. I'm sweating like a bitch right now. <laughs> Wanna check and make sure everything's in? Look. Jack, what was your question? <laughs> My question is when you're gonna come back to Doctor Who, because we miss you so much. I don't even know if that's a possibility, because it's not up to me, it's up to the producers. Sorry, I won't get con sweat all over you. Um, it's all good? 
Yeah, it smells really good too. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, it's not up to me, and, and if you kind of want to, you know, I don't know, write to whoever, text, tweet, do, I, you know, everybody, now, right now. No, again, that's, that's kind of the answer. Yeah, is that okay? Good. How do you get your hair to stay in that little quiff like that? <laughs> Does it? Because I try to do that, but mine kind of falls down. Yeah, mine, mine never falls down. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Okay, I'll remember you, don't worry. I love a twink. <laughs> the gays know what I'm talking about. And some lesbians, too. Yes! Um, so... In your career, what kind of role haven't you played yet that you still really want to play? Ah, uh, that stumped me a little bit. <laughs> Not many women stumped me. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say a dad, but I played a dad. Uh, not really a good one, so what I'd like... <laughs> My sister just had a heart attack there. <laughs> they don't look like they do when I was four, do they? Uh, so, thank you for being with me on that one. You got it. Great. Um, let me think. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to do a kind of more light, light-hearted role. Maybe a little comedy to it. Uh, and also I'd like to play, um, I do, we do have something up our sleeve for those of you who might want to come to our legendary, uh, panel. Seriously, we've got something that we're doing with our next comic with Legendary, and it's uh, the next graphic, uh, novel thing that we're doing. It's, um, I don't want to give too much of a word away here. Come to that panel because we're doing something really new with a comic book. That's all I can say. Okay? And when I, when I mean that, we're not like doing drawings that are going to come to life in front of your face or anything like that, okay? But it's something that has never been done with an actor and a comic book, okay? That, am I okay to say that? I've got my two co-writers down here, creators. Yeah, and the project is called Cursed, and if you want to know more about it, please come because it is freaking awesome! Yeah. Would you like to see me do a comedy? Okay, so a quarter of you would come along, the rest of me would be like, I don't want to watch him anymore. <laughs> Believe me, you'd still be there. <laughs> yes! Hi. Hi. <laughs> what does your shirt say? Let me see. Um, it's from a TV show. That's but from Dark Gently's Holistic Detective. <laughs> Sydney, and I just wanted to ask you how you would feel if there was a male companion for the female doctor. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, give him, give, give the, you know, give the doctor a transgender companion. Give him a, give him a boy, give him a girl, give him a little boy or a little girl, all that. You know, we can have many different combinations. Her, sorry, I should, I gotta get that in my head now. Um, yeah, so it, it, it can be open to a lot. Yes, I, 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 can we kind of let them stay, sir, sir, just so I can respond to them, we'll let them stay till I'm done, because when they walk away, it's like, oh, it's no, no, no. <laughs> Don't worry, yeah, Sydney, I, Sydney, you were done. Okay. <laughs> Sydney, I love you. I don't know what Sydney, I love, I love you. I love you in Mexican funeral. Sit your ass down. Where are all my deaf friends? Where are you? All my deaf and hard of hearing friends over there? How many? Can we wave for everybody? Cla can you applaud for the... Uh, uh, Jesus Christ, they can't hear you! <laughs> applaud! <laughs> Let's applaud for the deaf people! <laughs> they can't hear! It's like this, everybody! <laughs> there you go! Actually, did you notice the, the family from California who won the $447 million 
One, I don't know if anybody else notices, but I being part of a, a very big deaf charity in the UK, I noticed that one of them was applauding like this. So he must uh, either know or be someone who uh, knows uh, sign language or is deaf himself. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, yes. I digress. <laughs> I had a Trump moment. Anyway. <laughs> I promise I wouldn't bring up politics. Go. Hi. Hi. Um, you and your husband Scott recently had a yard sale. We had a garage oh, sale. A garage sale. Oh, I'm sorry. A little step of above the yard sale. <laughs> Get it right. So did you think about it at all before putting your address out on the internet to the whole wide world? Or no. <laughs> Because if you want to find out where I live, I know you will. <laughs> so we talked about it and I said, um, we have a wall. We have 20 Doberman pinchers inside that wall. If anyone steps in, they will be ripped to shreds. No, I, I didn't have a problem with it. I, when I lived in the UK, I put a, a, did a garage sale also when I was there and I put my address online. What I didn't like was that when the newspaper took it and posted it, that's a little different. But I put it uh, uh, on a flyer and I did that with my place in Palm Springs and yeah. And you know what's really awesome? And I'm saying this honestly, no one disrespected it. Seriously. Everybody was cool. Everybody who came, came and I had maybe <laughs> a week. <laughs> there was like a couple of days later, I'm like, do stuff in the garage. Why not do stuff in the garage? I have the door open. I'm like, you guys, if I have to clean my garage, I'm sweeping it out or I'm blowing it, the garage. <laughs> and I'm moving stuff around and all sorts. And I had this one guy pull up in front and he stopped by my driveway and he gets out of the car and he says, you have another sale? <laughs> He's like, oh, oh, you don't have anything? I'm like, I'm, oh, I got some dust. He's like, cool, put it in the bag. Can you imagine being his kids? Hey, kids, I got something from John Barrow, but it's dust. <laughs> dust. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was, I had no problem. Now watch, I'll go back to Palm Springs. There'll be like 100 people outside my door. Don't forget the Dobermans. <laughs> Cool, thank you. Yes? Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> out of all the people you've worked with, who do you have the biggest crush on? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> so let me just tell you this story. My, 40, my 50th, 40th birthday, I've got myself 10 years younger. Please! <laughs> my 50th birthday, uh, Stephen Amell promised me when we first started Arrow, he said, John, because I've always celebrated my birthday, and being in March, it's always been on the set of a TV show or something that I'm working on. And uh, he said, John, don't worry, when your 50th birthday, if I'm there, I'm gonna pop out of a cake and a Speedo for you. And I went, I will hold you to that. Sign here. So I, uh, uh, at my 50th birthday, and I invited all these people, and Stephen was there, and my friend Keith Jack uh, was also there from the UK, one of the uh, young men that I've mentored in musical theater for years. And uh, Keith and uh, um, Stephen disappeared, and Kelsey disappeared. You all know Kelsey, don't you? Do you know Kelsey? Kelsey, where are you? Kelsey, come here. Kelsey's known in my household as my Asian bitch. <laughs> Hi, this is Kelsey. Kelsey takes care of me. So Kelsey is with, um, Kelsey disappears. And she, uh, all of a sudden I am, uh, sit, they make me sit down, they turn all the lights out, and uh, out comes the birthday cake. And I'm like, oh my God, it's my birthday cake. But with my birthday cake is my friend Keith and Steven in Speedos. <laughs> holding it. And Kelsey's in the background going just like that. getting ready for it on top of each other. And they collapse and fall on the carpet and the BJ gets written on my carpet. What's the one thing you don't do in a gay man's house is leave any stains on his carpet or his carpets. Thank you, Buffy. Yes. So the person that I... 
yeah, Steve Namel. Anyway. <laughs> Hi, John. I love you. I'm getting married next year, and you're totally invited. <laughs> you're totally excited. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Who are you marrying? Uh, that girl right there. Where? <laughs> hey! Did I get a free pass? <laughs> you already are. Hey! <laughs> so my question is... Uh, <laughs> totally ignored it. <laughs> What's your question? If a group of questing adventurers in a dungeon... Say it again? If a group of questing adventurers in a dus Dungeons and Dragons campaign came across you as John Barrowman, would you be chaotic evil or chaotic good, and would you fight or seduce them? Can I make fun of them? Could I be chaotic crazy good? And could I fight them? until they're tired, and then pin them all down and make love to them. I love that you're giving me the big cheesy grin with a thumbs up because you like it, don't you? You love me. Thank you. Yeah. Great wedding. Send me an invite. I can't guarantee I'll come, but I love getting invites to weddings. Because you never know what presents will pop up on your uh, wedding table. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Alright! Look at you! Are we a little singer moon? Do you have panties on? Don't lift up if you don't. <laughs> oh, the camera's not showing. I can't. Oh no, just do it again. Just your rear end, not the front. Woo! I love. <laughs> I, well, anyway, don't mind. <laughs> Kelsey, get a business card ready. Anyway, yes. I'm just stretching for you. Go ahead. So, one of the things I love about you is that you're so well-rounded and have so many interests. How did you learn how to dance in heels? Yeah. When my mother was out when I was a little boy, I used to go in her closet, put the heels on, take out the vacuum cleaner, and do this. <laughs> freshen back and put the freshness back. Do the freshen back and put the freshness back. Not kidding you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just, I, it's like, I just know how to walk in heels. I don't know where it's come from. It's something inside me. <laughs> Look at me, you may think I never... <laughs> but yeah, I had to teach my sister and my niece to walk in heels because they were, when they put them on, I remember my sister the first time she was like going out on a date and she, the heels and she was like... <laughs> But you are, you are, the what? You are an athlete? That doesn't give a shit. I don't care if you're an athlete, a mathlete, or what. You need to walk in heels. So I'm like, this is not gonna work. You're not gonna get it. You might get locked, jaw. She can't, she arrived at my, this is the best. Sorry, I digress again. She arrived at my house last night, she's, and she's like, she's like, she's like, I can't talk. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> what do you mean you can't talk? She said, my jaw, I've locked jaw. I went, well, how did you get locked jaw? And then she started to tell my friend Brent, and my mom and dad as we're sitting there, well, when I was in college, my jaw got locked. I'm like, really? <laughs> how did you get locked jaw in college? Was that after I taught you how to walk in heels? I think so. She's telling my parents this story about the lockjaw, and I'm standing behind my parents going to my friend Brett. Because <laughs> <laughs> then she said to my mom, do you remember, mom, when you had to come up and take me for a cortisone injection in my lockjaw? I'm like, you actually called my mother <laughs> to come to college where you had lockjaw? <laughs> Oh, 
Prince Carol, all covered in banana. You're no Zira in my house, girl. Planet of the Apes reference for those of you who are originals. Uh, yes, I think we're gonna have to. Thank you very much, sir. I'll see you later. Um, let me know when I have five because I'm gonna sing for everybody. Yes. Uh, um, so I know you like to write, and I was just wondering what books were your biggest inspiration. What books were my biggest inspiration? Well, what we all as a team, of, uh, I, you know, I don't do the, the physical writing part of it. What, I do the creating of the story with Carol and Erica, and when Carol and I work together, we do all the character building and all the, uh, the outlining, and um, for those of you who are coming, we're doing our very first writer's workshop in Palm Springs, and it sold out within like a couple of days, which is awesome. We've taken over a whole hotel. Can you believe it? A weekend of the Barrowmans. <laughs> It'll be like this all the time! <laughs> In speed out! Um, so, uh, when we get all the information together, Carol and Erica are the ones who do the kind of the writing bit of it. Carol, when we're working there, she does all the writing. Um, uh, inspired, I, my, the book I go to all the time, which got me, was S.E. Hinton's The Outsiders. And that's my utmost favorite. And the fact of the matter now that she follows me on Twitter and messages me all the time, it's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> just done it again. <laughs> I totally love it. It's like one of my dreams come true. She actually sent me a, a tweet saying, <clears throat> after she read my book, our book, anything, anything Goes About My Life, she said, I am so honored that my book made such an impact to make you the great and special person that you are. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I am Pony Boy. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. G'day, John. G'day, Chris I can't do that accent very well because I suck out here. <laughs> I sound like Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try and talk slowly so everyone can hear. Uh, I wanted to know if you could be any superhero for a day, who would you be and why? Well, I've already been that superhero, and his name is Captain Jack Harkness. <laughs> I've already been a villain. Sorry, I'm trying to be like really kind of casual because I got pockets too. Yeah. Isn't that great? So I can do that and no one will see. Right. Um, if I had to choose one of the superheroes that were out there, what? Five minutes, okay. Uh, I have to say, because it was a favorite of mine as a kid, I always wanted to play, be the, the, amigo, the amigo action figure when I was playing with them. With my friend Ross, I always wanted to be Captain America. Would you like me to sing to you, or would you like me? So, um, you have a choice here. Can't take my eyes off of you, or Copacabana. <laughs> what was the other one, Kelsey? No, we don't have that one. Sorry, I forgot that at home. What was the third one? One Night Only. So, if you want number one, uh, Can't Take My Eyes Off of You, what would you like? Some applause. I think that one gets it, don't you? Yeah. Okay, so let me do one more question, then we'll hit call the command, everybody, okay? Here we go. One more question. Hey, Sorry, guys. I love you all, but I wish they'd give me two hours, because I would stand up here for three if they gave it to me, and I would do it all day. <laughs> yes, go ahead, sweet. Okay. Hi, John. My name is Tracy. And Make it a good one. You're the last one. Uh, oh, we were born on the same day, so we share a birthday. But what I want to know about is the future of Torchwood. I, I don't have any answer to that one. Sorry, because it's um, not up to me. Uh, I try my best to always try to put it in, to make it happen, to get it going, and I always seem to hit a wall. And it's like somebody always tells me an excuse or something, that the reason why it won't happen. I keep saying that there's so many people out there, which I know, that are, would really love it to come back and have another series. But again, I hit a wall because there's a lot of bureaucracy that we have to go through, and even to the point I have people telling me from certain organizations, you can't say that. I can. <laughs> because I'm not working for you at the moment, so I can say what I like. Okay. <laughs> and then they fucking know it was okay. <laughs> I would love it to come back, and I think the person that could bring it back would be Chris Chibnall. 
it's up to him. And it has to be he who makes the decision. And I will, when I go back to the UK next time, I'm gonna wine and dine him and I'll do whatever. I'll wear the dress. I'll do whatever, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I would love to have it back. Thank you very much.